Welcome back to another review. I've got something a bit different in today, a tripod. This was sent in via Zomi for a review. Um, I thought I'd look at this because I haven't looked at a tripod for quite a while and there's a lot of different ones on the market. This particular one is the M8 travel tripod. I've put all the key features on the screen for you and specs so you can check this out. You will note that I've put the Z818 see as well the weight on that because this is a magnesium aluminium and there's quite a useful diagram which is on we have here to give you an idea of the sizes so you can always go back and look at that now they call this a travel tripod because the legs uh, reverse around they fold back on itself and thus save size when you're traveling it comparing it to my Velbon tripod here you can see it is a fair bit shorter compacted up so hence that's the reason why it's called a travel tripod so simply just flip the legs out and they'll auto lock in place. I'll give you a close up look on the locking mechanism for the legs in a while and then push down the center column. You do have a felt bag with this that protects the head when you're traveling or transporting the tripod. Take that off, got drawstrings on that and just a quick a visual look at this particular tripod. It's quite different to some tripods because we have a twin uh, center column on this which can be inverted around at a 90 degrees angle. So unlike the traditional tripods with just a single center column, you do get a smaller short column included, and that is uh, just under 9.5 centimeters in length. And you'll note the bolt with the nut as well. So we'll come on to that a bit later on where you can attach it uh, using the monopod. So there's your short one. It is something extra to carry around, but still it's useful for getting down low. This is the user guide, you get an Allen key included. To be honest, the user guide isn't that good because it doesn't cover this specific model. Uh, it just covers a general tripod rather than the M8 one with the uh, different head position and the double column. So that's something which could be improved and the translations could be a lot better as well. So I'd like to see that uh, changed in a future revision. The supplied ball head is quite good. I've used quite a few ball heads recently. This one is decent. It has a single adjuster on the side, quite smooth movements, and you also have a locking knob for the bottom. So you can use this for panoramic shots. It'd be more useful for that. It's slightly dampened feel when you turn the head, but you could also attempt video panning shots with it as well. Now the style of this is Arca Swiss, which is very common, but notice they've rounded the edges on the plate and you have that quick release mechanism with the anti fallout design so you need to fully unscrew that to get the plate out and you can see the d-ring on the bottom so you don't need to use a coin or a screwdriver standard quarter inch screw thread on this you can unscrew that and you can also fit other plates on there as it's using that standard arca swiss style what i would have said is i would have liked to have had extra spirit levels on this you just get the one so you can see there's a blanking plate on the end of the knob there I would have liked to have seen at least another one included. It's not a huge issue, but it's something which I would have changed. And the reason for that is I'll come on to a bit later on. It's quite a glossy finish on this, which is uh, slightly different to some of the other ones I've looked at. But I'm glad they went with the machined finish on the knobs rather than the silicone. It just means it's going to be more durable long term. You can take the head off. 3 8 screw thread on that. You can also take the plate off there as well, the base. I will show you that later on. And I'll just attach it to a camera. This would be fine for most medium, even larger cameras, unless you've got something with a huge amount of weight. Here's the spirit level, so it's fine on this camera with the articulated screen, but it does mean that you're going to have to put that knob at the front where the lens is, and I tend to put it on the side sometimes. That's just something which I might have changed. The leg locks, the angle locks on this are spring-loaded, so you just pull it up and you can adjust that, and when you bring it down, it will automatically go into position, so you don't have to push it in or pull it out on some tripods, you have to do that. So pretty happy with that type of design and I've used it on the other Zomi tripod I have and it works quite well. I haven't had any problems with it. Um, it's quite a durable mechanism on that. What I would have said is just to smooth the edges off a little bit and it's the same for the uh, center column adjuster there. Just smooth the edges a little bit. It's not sharp, but it's just a small area where the finishing could be improved a touch. Now I'll show you the center column. We have a double version on this, which is unusual and it's different from most tripods. That does mean to say that you're slightly taller than a standard tripod with a single central column. So there's a column within a column or they're calling it a transverse column. So you just unscrew this. There's a wing sort of nut on that and then open it out. Once it's fully extended, 
you can then push it through. There's a ball joint in there. You don't have to fully extend it, but if you want to adjust it down to 90 degrees, you'll have to do that. Push it through. It's pretty smooth. have to admit it's smoother than I expected, but what it can't do is support any weight. You'd fit a phone on there, something light, but not a camera. So it has to be down in that 90 degree position where it is going to be stable and secure. You'd also need to make sure that it's not sticking out too far off center otherwise it will unbalance the tripod and that's going to depend on how wide the legs are spread out and also how much weight you have on there so just a bit of common sense with that now the second knob that you see me adjusting here that adjusts the tension on it so it doesn't fully lock it off it will stop it moving if you apply pressure it will move but it does mean to say is you can use this for things like panning etc and it's reasonably smooth I've put the camera on just to show you an example of this so you can adjust the tension on that to see how it suits you so it's potential there for video i would always suggest going for a fluid head a video head dedicated for that job but i'll show you a quick clip i'm not an expert on video i'm much more into stills photography but you can get pretty smooth pans off of this so that's something to consider with this tripod now you can unscrew the hook at the bottom that's there if you want to put a weight on there or a bag just to balance the tripod just unscrew that. Once you take that out, I will show you the options that you have. And you have quite a few options on this particular tripod. So we'll unscrew the center column, pull that out. Now, whether or not you want to reverse that, which you can, that will give you a lower down angle, particularly for the low down shots, macro work, stuff like that. You can also bring out the second column and put it off at an angle, which gives you some more flexibility with the types of shot that you can get. It also means if you're overhanging something, like a desk or a table or anything where you need to actually get further than the central column it's quite useful and now unscrew the base on this and then you can take that off and fit it to the short column if you need to get down really low so just screw that in and there's, there's your ultra low shots if you want to do that rather than reversing the camera around so you have some decent options on this another option is the monopod you'll see one of them is marked and it has the silicone band on it unscrew that and then you'll need to use the bolt and the uh, screw thread that I showed you with the nut on it you might need to adjust that slightly because you need enough length to go into the second segment and then just screw that in it's nice that it's included I've seen it on other tripods that I've looked at a few ones that I looked at previously it is useful particularly if you were going to buy a monopod this just means it saves you the cost of doing it, and it's a pretty sturdy monopod at that. This particular one, thanks to the double uh, column in the middle, is quite a bit longer than most. It goes up to nearly two meters fully extended. I doubt you will ever extend it that far. Obviously, this double column would be the last thing you would extend, and the stability on the legs is good. I have to admit, it's decent quality overall. They have got raised points on the feet, rather than the metal ones on the 818c that you screwed down and you have the twist locks on this some people prefer the lever locks and these are the screw locks on this i haven't had a problem with it it doesn't particularly bother me either way so let's have a look at the included case same as the 818c in other words it's a good quality case you have double zips on it so easy to get into and plenty of padding around the edges and on the sides this is the included shoulder strap that they've given you. A couple of small points with the finishing on that, but otherwise decent enough. So you're not going to be unhappy with the case that they've given on this particular tripod. Much nicer than the one that I got with the Veilborn, which I bought, which didn't have any padding at all. Nice little bonus is the light reflective strip. So if you're out late at night, that can help with safety. Compared to the other tripods that I've got, I did a review on the 818C. Pros and cons with tripods, different styles and designs. I would say that the Velbon boom arm is very good, particularly if you change angles a lot and uh, particularly height. But bear in mind, this does come at a cost. It's about £70 without a head, so that's going to add to the overall cost. It's going to be a bit more expensive than the M8 once you've factored that in. But I do like it. I bought it myself and I'm quite happy with it. If I didn't get that, I think I would consider this one as a viable alternative if I wanted to keep the budget a bit under the £100 mark. Yeah, that would cost you about 170 in total at the minute, the Velbon tripod. So mainly small points with this. User guide definitely needs to be worked on. 
Also would have liked to have seen extra spirit levels included on the head and just a couple of areas where the finishing just could be improved a little bit. Just round off those edges a touch. They're not sharp, they're not causing a problem, but just small areas which you would see a difference between a more affordable tripod and a higher price one. But you do have that dual stage column. You have good overall build quality and they've done a very nice job on the design as well in most areas. So pretty much a recommendation on this. Do look around at what you need. There's pros and cons with different styles and designs. This one is magnesium aluminium and some people prefer carbon. Haven't seen a carbon model from this, but it is quite a nice tripod, particularly at this price point. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you found that of some use and I will see you soon.